This Month on the Card Life, presented by CSG. When I would get off the train station and walk the one block to the top's office, you could actually taste the sugar in the air. One of the things that really got me taken off is where they took the picture for the card, what stadium they were at. I started messing around with it and thought, well, I could probably make a belt out of it. Here we are. Welcome once again to The Card Life, the only show dedicated to the sports card hobby. I'm your host, Matt Strom, and this month we're in Denver, Colorado for the second time in Card Life history. On this episode, we stop by the only museum dedicated to ballparks and tell you how its creator went from collecting baseball cards to creating a world-class museum. We'll talk with an artist who creates wearable belts out of sports cards, and I'll open a box looking for the first baseball card from my career. Across the street from Coors Field, the National Ballpark Museum is the home of one-of-a-kind treasures, including artifacts from the original 14 classic ballparks. How the museum came to be was in the vision of curator, founder, and president, Bruce Hellerstein. I think I represented uh, the generation of baby boomers, 50s and into the 60s. Car collecting was off the charts. We all did it as a neighborhood thing. I love baseball cards to death. But I'll tell you, one of the things that really got me taken off is where they took the picture for the card, what stadium they were at. And most of them were taken at the original Yankee Stadium. They did some at Ebbets Field. It might seem weird, but uh, that was as important as anything on that card. There was a personal development course that I took in the 1980s, and I just, someone uh, convinced me to go to it. So I, they had no idea what it was about. But one of the exercises we did in there is you put on the, the soft music and you close your eyes and you envisualize your perfect paradise. Well, that did take long for me. All I saw were ballparks. And that's what triggered my museum, is I just want to put this thing in real life. In order to finance, I thought, oh, this is what my cards are worth. Complete sets from 1952 through 1967, every Mickey Mantle card put out, and the rationale I used was I could always replace the cards, which is true. Bob Costas said, a day never goes by where he doesn't think about baseball. Believe me, that is a thousand percent true with me. It's more than just an interest or a passion. It's really a calling, especially with the old ballparks. I want to just spread the, the greatness of our national pastime. One item took 25 years. It was a piece of the old Yankee Stadium facade, the original Yankee Stadium. That's what happens. Sometimes you got to jump on something because you don't get second chances. My collection, you don't see tickets, you don't see programs. I sold on traded all those things. And I had some really good stuff, the Babe Ruth's call shot ticket, and just a lot of really neat stuff. But you reach a point where you gotta measure, do I rather have a great polo grounds signage from the train that took you to polo grounds, and that's how the song Take Me Out to the Ball Game originated, or would I rather have a piece of cardboard? You just have to make those decisions. wonder what your cards are worth? Snap a photo of your cards. Get the value in seconds. Build your collection. Buy and sell. Level up in the hobby. Pristine Auction is a proud sponsor of The Card Life. Head over to pristineauction.com where over 10,000 sports card auctions end every week. 
In Lakewood, Colorado, Will Elmore has created a product that offers collectors to show off their passion for the hobby by wearing it. My name is Will. I'm the owner of Card Belts. Originally, I pulled a bunch of old Texas Ranger cards, sort of mutual players that my brother-in-law disliked as kids. I won't name any names because I'm sure they're really nice guys, but I thought about being, making a wallet and realized that you only see really two entire cards and parts of several others. So I just shelved the idea and then COVID hit. My sons at the time were nine and 11 and their baseball seasons were canceled. And my dad had just dropped a huge pile of cards on me that he was gonna get rid of. The boys and I just started sorting cards and killing time in my garage while we were on lockdown. We were sorting cards into different piles, like let's make a pile of afros or a pile of like funny mustaches or you know weird glasses. And so as we started sorting these piles, it started coming together that like, God, this would be a funny set of cards to do something with. You know, what can I use them? And I, I honestly don't remember the like sort of moment of definitely it should be a belt. I just, I started messing around with it and thought, well, I could probably make a belt out of it. And so I started on that path and here we are. This brewer's belt. So this belt is done on the back, but I just need to finish it off and put, put a top side on it, throw the belt buckle and belt tab on it. It's fun to just decide what gets to go on the belt and what, what goes where. This is the move when I started where it was about a 50-50 chance that I was gonna destroy the entire belt. Now, like, I really could probably do it in my sleep. The Gary Sheffield 89 tops where he's got the a G and S on his teeth. When I get custom brewers belts, which this is a, a custom order for a brewer's belt, they always ask for this card. That's the main question, are these the cards, you know? I've had people say, so when you print these out, I'm like, nope, they're not printed. This is the Tony Gwynn card I should not have sliced up, you know? So I get some heat sometimes for some of the cards that I cut up. Look at these <laughs> garbage belt, good belts. I mean, these are just, they're so cool. And this is a, this is a series one card that I absolutely should not have sliced up. I've caught some grief for cutting those cards up for sure. A bunch of these are these art cards like the Verin Wells and the Diamond King stuff. Um, those are pretty popular and those are so fun to make because there's no way to not make a, a, a handsome belt, you know? I still haven't believe this belt hasn't sold yet. It's an all 70s NFL Afros belt. It's just great Afros, great facial hair. Ricky. Don, Dale. Those are the three that everybody wants, but Don Mattingly by a mile is the most popular individual belt. Ozzy Smith is a close, he's fourth behind Dale Murphy, but it's a real close fourth. Teams, it's Cardinals, Mets, Dodgers, so. So it's cool when like someone buys an Expos belt, I'm like, yes, who is wearing that, you know? <laughs> I think the big turning point for me, because it was a fully online business, was all last year I did block events or you know three day weekend beer festival events and the reactions, seeing them surrounding my booth and just listening to what they were saying was like, oh my God, like these are as cool as I think they are. It's not just me. Hit Parade is the award-winning sports card, memorabilia, and mystery repack sweeping the nation. Pull your favorite players like Josh Allen, LeBron James, Mike Trout, Austin Matthews, and others from their huge product selection. Welcome back. We're at the National Ballpark Museum here in Denver, Colorado. And this month's break is sponsored by Hit Parade. 
So this is their 2023 Baseball Series 3 Platinum, which guarantees us an autograph card per box. So we are gonna get into it and see what we get. Slide that out first. All righty, here we go. Should be one encased card. That is not a bad one at all. Ronald Acuna Jr. Tops finest to 50. Would you look at that? He's having a heck of a year. It's really cool. Very nice. For the next box, we got uh, Panini Elite. And uh, last time we were here in Denver, we had some luck with some Topps Chrome and pulled my rookie card. Uh, this is actually one of the first products I ever signed for. And you're guaranteed eight autographs in this uh, box. So hopefully Denver's our lucky place to pull, pull my autos and let's see if we can get another one. My agent got the deal done and uh, they just, they sent me all the stickers and I want to say I signed the printing plates, maybe? Yeah, it was actually the first card deal I had. So we got, what do we got? Five packs here, eight autos and two mem cards. The foil makes it hard to read. That's not a bad one right away. Alex Kirloff auto, with a little inscription there to 75. It's not bad at all. Eloy Jimenez to 200. And then we got a dual patch of Brett Phillips. Houston and Milwaukee, you must have got traded that year or something. I have a couple of mine. Um, actually, the one one was just offered to me, oh, really? but I knew someone who wanted it, so they have the, almost the complete rainbow of this, so I let them have it. And Will Benson is our last auto. Willie B, he signs. That's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, not a bad one there at the end. Aaron Judge quad patch to 299. It's really cool. All righty, no Matt Strom. The one that gets me nervous now. Bowman Chrome 2018. I think it's pretty obvious who we're looking for. He's right here on the box. Tanya Cunha Endeavors. Not a bad rookie class here. Our auto is Charcer Burks. Then we got Manny Machado. And a Shohei Otani in the first pack. I just get, went up and saw a pitcher slash DH. Gave it away. Would you look at that? And honestly, the Bowman rookie is my favorite rookie of him because he's hitting. The other ones he's pitching. Hey, another top rookie, Rafael Devers. He's a very rich man now. Daz Cameron. Hey, babyface Marshy. No beard, Brandon Marsh. Yeah. He's gonna hate it when I put it in his locker. Really, the only thing that can beat that box is a color or an auto of Shohei, right? And you got a Tatis insert. Chris Bryant and Alex Gordon. One of my all-time favorite teammates right there in Gordo. Francisco Lindor and Lucas Giolito. So I would have to say box one was definitely the winner. Shohei Endeavors. Very nice. Hit a home run with Hit Parade Mystery Boxes at hitparadecollection.com. Hit Parade is packed full of the hottest sports cards and memorabilia products in the hobby. Voted best repack brand of the year three years in a row at Beckett's Industry Summit, Hit Parade's boxes gives you a chance to chase Hall of Famers, current stars, or top rookies in every box like Patrick Mahomes, 
Luka Doncic, Shohei Otani, Connor McDavid, and more. Every series is built with a limited number of boxes, so there's always a chance at pulling big hits. Check out our full roster at hitparadecollection.com today. Ever wonder what your cards are worth? Snap a photo of your cards. Get the value in seconds. Build your collection. Buy and sell. Level up in the hobby. ChristineAuction.com. It's baseball stuff. It's basketball. It's wrestling. It's Marvel stuff. Tatis, Patrick Mahomes, Wayne Gretzky, LeBron James, autographed and Adidas jersey, Mookie Betts, Muhammad Ali. Personal favorite thing on the site are the 10 minute auctions. You can bid on the item for only 10 minutes. Highest bidder wins. It's free to register, free to bid. Sign up today, ChristineAuction.com. CSG is proud to be the official grading partner of The Card Life. CSG's world-class expertise and state-of-the-art technology provide collectors with accurate, consistent, affordable, and fast grading. Learn more at csgcards.com. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Lynn Brown's childhood in the 1940s and early 50s revolved around comics and baseball cards. I used to like cut out the comics from the daily paper and I would save them, you know, so I would actually have years worth of comics, you know. <laughs> we lived in a one bedroom apartment and I used to collect the baseball cards and then when I would have a complete set, that was it, I had it. And then because we didn't have room, my mom would say, well, you know, get rid of this year's set. We, so we would throw it out and I would start collecting the new set. Brown's future took a turn at age 14, when he spotted a newsstand with a Davy Crockett magazine displayed. He sent a letter to the publisher with ideas for future magazines. The publisher was Woody Gelman, also an editor and art director at Topps. I gave him a whole bunch of suggestions, you know, and he actually said, well, I'll well, stay in touch. We'll find a job for you at Topps, and they did. In 1959, at the age of 18, Lynn Brown began working at Topps. A thing that I remember very fondly, before Topps moved the gum factory down to Duryea, Pennsylvania, where they manufactured the gum, when I would get off the train station and walk the one block to the Topps office, you could actually taste the sugar in the air from all the sugar that was you know, going. It would actually almost like fall on your tongue. Working in product development, Brown started writing the backs of Topps baseball cards for the 1960 set, a job he continued through most of the 60s. Each team would put out a yearbook, and, and the yearbook would actually have statistics and facts about the ball players. So it would be the easiest thing in the world to just like look at the yearbook that they gave me and write about the ball players. Writing hundreds of notes a year meant there would be inevitable typos. The back of Phillies pitcher Dave Bennett's 1964 card read, Dave is the younger brother of the Phil's ace, Dennis Bennett. The 19-year-old right-handed curveballer is just 18 years old. One of the bosses got a little annoyed at me. That was just like an embarrassing typo, you know. And I remember one of the bosses came in and says, doesn't anyone proofread these things? <laughs> they never fired me though. <laughs> In the 1960s, product research centered around what Topps youngest consumers were most interested in. What we would do a lot of times, we had what you would call test stores 
where we could go in and talk to the kids and see what their interests were. A lot of times we got good ideas from the kids, you know, because they knew what kids really liked. For 41 years, Lynn Brown worked at Tops. He was the co-creator of Thunder Agents and Mars Attacks. He also worked on the 1962 Civil War set, Garbage Pail Kids, and Star Wars. How often does a person have one job his whole life and work in the same place for 40 years? But they were a very generous company, family-owned business, and I'm proud of what I've done, you know. ChristineAuction.com. It's baseball stuff, it's basketball, it's wrestling, it's Marvel stuff. Tatis, Patrick Mahomes, Wayne Gretzky, LeBron James, autographed Anika Adidas jersey, Mookie Betts, Muhammad Ali. Personal favorite thing on the site are the 10 minute auctions. You can bid on the item for only 10 minutes. Highest bidder wins. It's free to register, free to bid. Sign up today, pristineauction.com. Pristine Auction is a proud sponsor of The Card Life. Head over to pristineauction.com where over 10,000 sports card auctions end every week. Nick Wasicka is based in the Twin Cities, but you have seen his work on hundreds of iconic cards over the last few years. The process by which his photographs appear on cards is much different than you might think. My name is Nick Wasicka. I'm a freelance sports photographer from Shakopee, Minnesota. It was always a goal to get my work on trading cards because, you know, I'd been collecting since I was seven years old. I bought my first box of 82 tops and then, you know, my first set was 83 tops and get that job to go cut the grass and then you get the money and then you beg your parents to take you to the card shop and then you blow all the money you just made the week before cutting grass. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. The way it works, when I go cover a game, throughout the game, I'm submitting at least 25 to 40 photos. And these are the stories that tell about what happened during the game. Losing pitcher, you know, this guy hit a bomb, you know, made their debut, that sort of thing. And then afterwards, we do what's called a second edit. And I can go through and anything that I think looks cool, I edit, and then I'll transmit, and then they end up on the wire. That's where, you know, a photo editor can go to one of these wire services and type in Mike Trout, uh, Angel Stadium, and every photo that's ever been submitted from that year and that criteria is going to pop up. And the photo editor is going to scour through all of these photos and pick one or two or three or whatever that end up on cards. So I think that's sort of like the coolest part for me because somebody saw enough in my work to pick it out of these thousands of photos and, and put it on a card. I love release day because I'm just like, I'll be on the computer just looking. Not mine, not mine. Oh, it might be mine. That one's mine. You go in the, in the Nick pile. It was a Tops Now of Jose Barrios. I looked at it, I'm like, well, that looks like something I would shoot. And I just saw it again. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go look. And I was just like, that's my photo. And like, call me, like, ah, honey, guess what? Your nerdy husband just got his first photo on a baseball card. It was really cool because like the next week he did a signing and we, we got to go, he autographed it and we got the photo. I'm like, look, this is super weird, but like, will you hold this card and go like this? Because this is my first baseball card and it's you. So it's me and my son with the photo. It's probably exhausting for other photographers because I always tell them, like, I'm just here to get baseball cards. They're like, we know, and like with the eye roll. There's a lot of things that have to go right to get a good photo. Where are you at in, in, in relation to the play? I'm often shooting when other people aren't because I like the stuff that happens in between the action. You know, like the subtleness of prepping your bat, adjusting a batting glove, kicking the dirt off, or, you know, knocking the dirt off your cleats, you know, blowing a bubble. It's my card collection. Like these are my cards. I think I'm not good enough to be on the cards, but I'm still on the card. 
That's all for the Card Life this month. Next month's show will profile sports card stories across the state of Illinois. I'm Matt Strom. We'll see you next time on the Card Life.